Guys, this is it. This is literally what I've been waiting for my entire life. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a doctor working in the UK and on this channel, we explore the strategies and tools that help us live happier, more productive lives. Isn't that fun? Now, the iPad Pro has been one of the key tools in my productivity arsenal since way back in 2017. And I actually do really like the old keyboard folio. The keyboard's pretty nice. It's actually was one of my favorite typing experiences on the planet. But when I first saw the ad for the new Magic Keyboard, I nearly had a stroke because this thing just looked absolutely incredible. I've got my hands on it for the first time. This is the first impressions review and it has so far completely blown me away. So let's start with the most important thing and that is the keyboard. The question is how fast can I type on this thing? Oh, this is the best words per minute I've ever got in my life. Previously, my record was 154 on the old version of the Apple Magic Keyboard. This is literally the first time I have ever typed on this Magic Keyboard. The first typing test I've ever done on it, other than just like a few bits here and there. 156 doable words per minute. Accuracy, 99.23%. Yeah, the keyboard is obviously fantastic. Like it feels exactly like the MacBook Air scissor kind of keyboard, which is now what the, what the keyboard mechanism is on the 16 inch MacBook Pro as well. And this just, just feels absolutely perfect. Like there's such a nice level of clickiness to the keys, the space bar is good, everything feels well proportioned. The only gripe I would have with it slightly is that as I'm kind of typing in this configuration, my hand is sort of occasionally hitting that. If I do like a big kind of motion in sort of that kind of plane, then my hand does occasionally brush against the bottom of the iPad Pro in this sort of configuration. I imagine in this position, it's not a problem at all, but in this one, which is sort of the most horizontal position you can get on this, it is slightly annoying, but yeah, no, this is this is just so much better than, than the old one. And I thought the old one was absolutely amazing. The keyboard actually apparently has a backlight to it. So if I turn this light off, now we should be able to see the backlighting of the keyboards. And apparently it's a bit of a ball ache to actually change the backlighting. You have to go on settings and then you have to go on like keyboard, keyboard brightness. So you can see how the brightness changes as I adjust that. But to be honest, apparently it's just based on the ambient light sensors of the iPad and it just kind of works. Right, let's, let's put the light back on. So that is basically the keyboard. Let's talk about the trackpad now. Like the trackpad is quite nice. It feels a lot more natural kind of navigating the iPad using using the trackpad. Uh, the thing that, that that's always annoyed me about the iPad Pro and one of the main reasons why I think everything that you do on an iPad Pro is just inherently less efficient than using a proper MacBook is because you have to reach up and touch stuff. Like if I want to open a Safari window, the most natural thing to do would be to click on Safari. If I want to navigate YouTube, the most natural thing to do would be to kind of scroll like this, click the button, type some stuff. But now this is as good a trackpad as you get on the MacBooks. It's a lot smaller, obviously. It actually clicks rather than just being a force touch trackpad. But so far, it feels really, really good. And I can, I can imagine that this is going to significantly increase my productivity on the iPad. Just because having this, especially when it comes to adjusting text, let's go on bare. And if I were to write out draft, it feels very natural to use the trackpad to select text. And so for me, because I make money on the internet based off of kind of the stuff that I can produce mostly by writing, which then turns into video scripts, this is gonna pay for itself. It's an absolutely no brainer of a purchase because even though this was 350 pounds, if it just helps me create one more video in a three year period, it will have paid for itself. Like <laughs> this is an absolute no brainer if you're someone who values productivity and if you can see the return on, on investment from buying something like this. Let's now talk about the thing that everyone is talking about, the fact that it floats. So it does sort of float. What you can do is you take it off and this thing is very rigid. Like this is as far as this part of the case goes, but it's it's very, very well built. It's very It's very strong. And then you gently place the iPad on and it magnetizes to the back of the thing. And now you can see that you can sort of go this angle, which is a bit pointless, unless you've got it kind of lying in bed, which might be useful. And then you can go up to this angle, but you can't press it down any more than that because it just doesn't work. And if you overpress, then it's gonna fall over. So this is, I think, a pretty good angle to have the keyboard on. I can't really imagine it having more, having it more horizontal. 
Unless, for example, I was using the Apple Pencil, in which case I might want it more horizontal. Apple Pencil goes onto the top. If I want to write with the Apple Pencil, let's say I'm on Notability, which is my favorite note-taking app for the iPad, I'm going to do a comparison between Notability and GoodNotes at some point. Yeah, if I'm writing with the Apple Pencil, this sort of configuration, maybe if, you, if you're an artist and you're sort of painting and doing your over the hills and far away kind of paintings on an iPad, this would make sense. But as someone who's writing on it, apparently what you can do is you can put it into this sort of configuration. And this actually works surprisingly well. <laughs> This sort of angle is just like turning it over. It's a bit ghetto, but it works surprisingly well for writing. I don't think that's how you're supposed to use it, but that is probably the configuration I would have it in if I were using the Apple Pencil extensively. Unfortunately, the experience of writing on this is a bit crap right now because I haven't got the paper-like screen protector on it yet. It's on the way. I had to order a new one because this is a 12.9 inch iPad. It's new. My favorite screen protector of all times. Makes it feel like paper writing on it. Link in the video description. Check out the paper-like screen protector. At the moment, I'm not a fan of this screen. It looks kind of cool. I'm going to be taking this to work every day for the next month and I'll be filming some B-roll at work and I'll get some impressions from my fellow medical doctor colleagues about what they think about the float. I really want to flex the float on people because I imagine not many people at work will have seen this in real life. And so people might be like, oh, is that the new iPad Pro Magic Keyboard? I'll be like, yes, thank you for noticing. This is exactly why I have it, to flex on people at work. Speaking of flex, there's not much flex to this case. If we look at the old one, there was quite a lot of flex to it. It's a sort of, sort of flimsy. It sort of moves around. Oof. But with this new one, it is very, very, very sort of rigid and well-built. Like this as a whole package feels kind of heavy. It feels a lot beefier than just having the folio case on it. And in fact, if you look at the comparisons online, people have very kindly weighed just this keyboard case and the iPad. And this weighs about 700 grams, which is more than the iPad weighs, supposedly. Yeah, build quality, amazing. One of the annoying things about it that I immediately realized is that when you have the iPad like this, right? And you wanna open up the keyboard case, how do you do it? When you have a laptop, you expect that you can just kind of flick it up and it would just work. But with this, you have to kind of get your fingers underneath it. And it becomes almost like a, a two-handed two job. It's, okay. Is, is there a way to do it as a single hand job? That sounds weird. I don't think I, I don't think I can, can actually open this with just one hand. This has to be a two handed job. So it's a little bit fiddly to get out, but once you get it out, then it looks pretty great, if I say so myself. Another really cool thing about this is the fact that apparently it has pass through charging, plugging in a USB-C cable. Boom, it's charging. So now this USB port is free to do stuff. To be honest, I don't tend to plug a lot of things into here, but now that I've got the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with, I think I went for the 256 gigabyte hard drive, I can now do things like plug in my Samsung T5 SSDs to potentially even try editing videos off of this, potentially photo editing off of this. I've got one of these, where is it? One of these like SD cardy reader type things. Stick the SD card in and I would still have pass through charging if I'm doing something intensive like editing photos or editing videos or music production which is something that i want to get into other than that what else is there to say about this it feels really good closing it like oh you just kind of press it and then oh look at that i've, I've, I've got to do that again oh that that is a well-designed product we've got the, the old apple logo on the back it's not too garish it's not like the gold iphone or something but a very subtle embossing of the Apple logo. Yeah, I mean, this is absolutely sick. The question is, can it be used in a lap? So I'm gonna put it on my lap. Yeah, I would say it can be used in a lap. It does require me to slouch a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna go over to the sofa right now and try and use it in a lap in different places around the house. So be right back. It's just so good. I feel like a genuine productivity grease monkey when I'm typing on this. Okay, really good on the sofa like this. What about like this? Yeah, nothing wrong with that either. How far off the lap can it go? Yeah, because it's quite top heavy, it does need to kind of be supported a bit more. Whereas if it were a laptop, I guess you could put it off the edge a little bit more, but this one is quite top heavy, so it probably will fall over. And now I am using it on my lap in bed. Yeah, this is some good stuff. So yeah, lap test passed with flying colors, works beautifully on the sofa and on the bed. It's a keyboard, it's a keyboard case. It probably protects the iPad a fair bit. It's gonna be a bit weird getting used to opening it kind of the wrong way around. I am hugely excited by the possibilities that this keyboard is gonna to bring to me. And just as a sort of first impressions, this is the single best product I have used in a very, very long time. There's really nothing about this I can fault other than the price. It's quite expensive. It's 300 pounds or $300 for the 11 inch, 350 for the 12.9 inch, but 
like I said, you know, for me and for a lot of people I know, the return on, on investment for this is going to be, it's going to make it an absolute no-brainer. If you're a student, do you need it? Probably not. If you're a student and you have loads of spare cash to burn, then get it. Yeah, you won't be disappointed. This is fantastic. If you like this and you want to see a comparison of the 11 inch versus 12.9 inch and hear the reasons why I've got the 12.9 inch now and why I was wrong about why I used to think the 11 inch was better, then do click the video over there. Or if you haven't yet got an iPad and you don't know which one to get, then click the video here, which will be a long in-depth analysis of exactly which iPad you should get. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.